The Cats in Krasinski Square, written by Karen Hesse and illustrated by Wendy Watson. This is the story of two Jewish girls who live outside of the ghetto wall, and they are pretending to be Polish girls, and they are passing. The Cats in Krasinski Square. The cats come from the cracks in the wall, the dark corners, the openings in the rubble. The rubble is from the bombing by the Germans. They know I can offer only a gentle hand, a tender voice. They have no choice but to come. They belonged once to someone. They slept on sofa cushions. They ate from crystal dishes. They purred, furrowing the chest, nuzzling the chins of their beloveds. Many of, the, many of these abandoned cats were the house cats that belonged to many of the Jews. And there in the picture, you can see the ghetto wall. And this is outside the ghetto. Now, they have no one to kiss their velvet heads. I whisper, I have no food to spare. The cats don't care. I can keep my fistful of bread, my watery soup, my potato, so much more. So much more than my friend Michael gets behind the wall of the ghetto. The cats don't need me feeding them. They get by nicely on mice. I look like any child playing with cats in the daylight in Warsaw. My Jewish armband burned with the rags I wore when I escaped the ghetto. I wear my Polish look. I walk my Polish walk. Polish words float from my lips, and I am almost safe, almost invisible, moving through Krasinski Square, past the dizzy girls riding the merry-go-round. And there in the background, you can see the ghetto wall. My brave sister Myra, all that is left of our family, my brave sister tells me the plan, the newest plan, to smuggle food inside the ghetto. Her friends will come on the train, carrying satchels filled not with clothes or books, but bread, groats, and sugar. I know the openings in the wall. The cats have taught me. I show Myra on a map. Her friend Eric has drawn. Every crack will be filled with food, Myra says, bringing our thin soup to simmer on the ring. I ask to smuggle the bread through the spot near Krasinski Square, where Michael lives on the other side of the wall. Myra knows the danger, but she nods. I fall back onto the mattress, and the big room dances with light. But on the day when the train is already rolling towards Warsaw, Eric, breathless, bursts into our room and says the Gestapo knows of the train and the satchels and they'll be waiting at the station with their dogs to sniff out the smugglers. The look that passes between Eric and Myra frightens me more than a knock on the door in the night. I cannot remain inside. Instead, I wear my Polish look. I walk my Polish walk. Polish words float from my lips. And as I move through Krasinski Square, singing a nonsense song, the cats come from the cracks in the wall, the dark corners, the openings in the rubble. And I know what we must do. We gather the cats one by one, Myra and Eric and Heinrich and Marek, Hannah and Anna, Tosia and Stacia, we gather the cats into baskets. And we head to the station where we spread out waiting for the train behind the Gestapo and their straining, snarling dogs.
we open our baskets and we let the cats loose. The station explodes into chaos as frenzied dogs turn their wild hunger on the cats who flee in every direction, slipping through cracks into dark corners between openings. The smuggled food vanishes from the station, vanishes from our side of Warsaw, through the wall, over the wall, and under the wall, into the ghetto, including my basket with a loaf of bread for Michael, taken by grateful hands. And there you can see them smuggling food over the fence. And the music from the merry-go-round floats in the air, rising, tinsel bright, above Krasinski Square. It reminds me a little bit of the merry-go-round with horses from Milkweed. Author's note. In 2001, I came across a short article about cats outfoxing the Gestapo at the train station in Warsaw during World War II. I couldn't get the story out of my mind, so I went in search of accounts of the Warsaw Ghetto and the Jewish resistance in Poland. The two most valuable sources I found were the Ringelbaum Archives and Adina Blady Schwager's book, I Remember Nothing More. Myra, the fictional older sister of the narrator in the Cats in Krasinski Square, was inspired by Adina Blady Schweiger. I owe the texture and substance of the book to Schweiger's account of her experience with the Jewish resistance. In late September of 1939, at the beginning of World War II, Warsaw, the capital of Poland, fell into the hands of the attacking Germans. The Gestapo, German state police, forced all Jewish men, women, and children from Warsaw and its surrounding towns to live on certain streets within the invaded city. If non-Jews lived in any of the buildings on these streets, they received orders to move out. A high brick wall was built to keep the Jewish people in, separated from the Aryans. Those were the non-Jewish whites, who lived on the other side. And by the time the Gestapo collected all the local Jewish people, the overcrowding inside the Warsaw Ghetto created conditions ripe for disease and hunger. Every day, hundreds of men, women, and children fell in the streets, too ill to take another step. And in those streets, they died. In July of 1942, the Germans began carrying out their plans to relocate the Warsaw Jews. The youngest and oldest disappeared from the ghetto first, at the rate of 2,000, then 10,000, then 20,000 people per day. The weakest were killed before they ever left Warsaw. Eventually, the Germans emptied the ghetto of all the Jews, except for those working in war plants. Even though they were physically and emotionally exhausted, many Jews fought back. Thousands of brave young men and women planned ways to upset the Nazis' plan. The Jews formed an opposition group, causing trouble for the Germans whenever possible. At great risk, these daring Jews snuck people out of and weapons, food, and medicine into the ghetto saving thousands of Jewish lives. In April of 1943, the German army had every advantage when the last battle against the Warsaw Ghetto fighters began. And yet, this handful of six starving and injured civilians held off an army of trained German soldiers for over 40 days. <clears throat> As the Germans bombed and set buildings on fire, the Jewish resistance, leading their attacks from basements, attack, basements attics, and hidden passages, knew the chance for a victory over the Germans was impossible. Yet even after the buildings within the ghetto were flattened, small pockets of fighters rose up and did battle against the Nazis waging a war until death. Not every Jew died. Those who passed as Polish on the other side of the ghetto wall, they aided the escape of several hundred Jewish fighters. These daring warriors struggled out of the, struggled out of the ghetto towards freedom neck deep through the filth and stench of the sewers beneath Warsaw. The last survivors of the Jewish ghetto came forward at war's end to tell the terrible truth of the deeds carried out by the Nazis. In memory of my mother, Fran Levine. For my father, Aldrin Aud Watson, my teacher, my mentor, my colleague and collaborator. The Cats of Krasinski Square. 
based on a true story.